A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, Lord, whose care is for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power, and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us. For you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope because you give repentance for sins. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. 
the word of the Lord. saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to someone who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, the enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came and said, Master, you did not sow good seed in your field, didn't you? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, the enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, do you not want us to go and pull them up? He replied, no, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the weeds along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. And then the harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. We propose another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field it's the smallest of all the seeds, and yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke yet another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast uh, that someone took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables. To fulfill what had been said to the prophet, I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. The disciples approached and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds and the wheat. He said in reply, The one who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin, and all evildoers. He will throw them into the fiery furnace, where they will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Thank you. Very quietly, you'll see a hedge pop up out of the garden during the summer. But before that, you'll see some weeds throwing out the garden. Oh, that person is weeding. It's a common sight in our garden here in the summer. A few of you are heaven on your hands and knees in the midst of the weeds. And growing, they do. So your time to be as wise as Jesus said, be careful not to uproot the good stuff. It's a little different in a garden compared to fields and fields of grain. You can't possibly go and uh, pick all of those weeds out of fields of grain. It's the human condition, isn't it? These 
weeds uh, that are there in our lives. I mean, it's the good stuff. We've been reading so much about uh, interpretation of weeds and wheat in people's lives. What some feel uh, are wheat, others feel they're the weeds. What statues or images have held cultures together are no longer serving the needs of some. So it is a, a culture where we name the weeds and name the wheat. Um, there is a word that uh, I don't like called uh, cancel culture. I find it very harmful. I find it very difficult. I find it playing God's role. Imagine if every idea that was brought to someone in a corporation, whoever was in charge of making decisions, said, no, that's a lousy idea. Well, some people have good ideas, even if you're not the chair of the board. So well, tell me more about them. Let me listen to that. Initially, I may not agree with it, but tell me some more. And so ideas happen, and patents get approved, and new products are developed. It's the listening, isn't it? We just don't cancel out. And even Jesus, at the times, uh, and like here at the end, he said, there will be this final moment. There will be this judgment. This reign of God is going somewhere. And uh, in the end, there will be the time for the final canceling, we would say. In the meantime, uh, we grow together. And we become stronger when we're with the truth. When we're living in this way that Jesus is teaching, trying to explain God's nature, the moral nature of God. I say that the word, word he does translate it best as the word of nature of God, God's nature. So Jesus uh, is there, and he criticizes the Pharisees often for their hypocrisy. It doesn't just eliminate them. So I, th I think this approach of this reign of God, this world nature of God, you know, takes on life that is messy, that is difficult. And if it's true within ourselves, it's also true without. We know what that's like. And Paul says that elsewhere. The good that I want to do, I don't do. And the evil that I know I shouldn't do, and I don't really want to do, I do anyway. So that understanding of we're carrying this uh, kind of both hand in our hearts. But we work at the good, don't we? We try to uh, purify uh, the goodness and try to strengthen the goodness so that we're not focusing only on uh, what are the weeds, what are the struggles. Out in uh, California, a week or so ago, uh, there was a fire at uh, one of the missions, St. Bonaventure, almost around St. Bonaventure's Day, actually. We're not sure how it happened, but what that community feels like with no place to worship. So that's, for them, all of a sudden, this, this weedy reality comes in front of them. The death of children again and again, senseless violence for no reason. The weediness of grieving parents and community members. We hear this almost daily. So there is a lot of there's a lot of weed, isn't there, in our, in our hearts and our lives. So Jesus says it somehow has to be together. But it calls forth greater strength and courage to be stronger, to be more like God. You know, when you pick up the book of wisdom. Uh, it, it's it, you know it's written right before maybe even around the time Jesus was already uh, born perhaps but certainly right before that time so it really is a very contemporary uh, book it has a long view of salvation history for the Jewish people and it says you know this God you kind of blow our minds 
You're so powerful, but then you're so radiant. You're so strong. And maybe your justice is sort of poured out freely. It's might, but the perfection of your power is hard to believe it can be so smooth. And whatever, whoever comes to you will forgive. So this nature of God has this power, this strength, this mightiness, this force, this ultimate authority, and yet compassion, goodness, kindness, mercy, beyond what we can imagine. So this reflection of the writer, reflection of Lady Wisdom, says, you know, and those who are just you want them to be kind. You allow them to, in their justice to be bring that kindness to others. And there's good reason for hope. It's good if we lose hope, what have we? Nothing. Because faith and hope are, are companions. Uh, faith and hope uh, walk together, accompany each other. And they are part of our journey. So today, let us think about those weeds and weeds, uh, the image of the, uh, uh, the leaven and the bread and the mustard seed. Uh, Jesus has been tossing out so many possibilities. Well, he said, well, here, the kingdom is like, me, like this. I can't exactly tell you what it is fully and completely because it's impossible to really comprehend because it's God's nature. But it's sort of like this. It's like this reality. It's a little bit of that, and all of a sudden you have this huge, you know, was the I Love Lucy show 70 years ago where the, where the bread's like oven doors flying, it's <laughs> coming out of the open. You're too young to know about I Love Lucy. <laughs> you know, that sense of it's like, you know, how could this be? And Jesus said, well, that, that's exactly right. Then you're on the right track. If you could say, well, God, how can you be this one? How can you let this goof be in charge of things? How can that someone so foolish have all this authority? How can, you, how can you allow me, a sinner, to actually have your mercy? It doesn't make sense. Why are these people killing innocent children in their neighborhood? And why are those good people still working to change their neighborhood? So let us stay with that wonder. Because then we're beginning to get a better sense of God's nature, of who God is. And then hopefully it penetrates us. And we are presenting, we're supposed to present this reign of God, this royal nature of God to those in the world, those around us. So it's not just to stand there in awe and wonder, but also to live it, which is a great challenge.
from search for 